Good evening, sinners and saints. I am the Demon Fergus, and if you don't know me, I and you're seeing this from another content creator on YouTube or Instagram, wherever. Uh, I am also a content creator from that makes medicine videos. Uh, not official as much as I would like to be, but we'll get there one day. But I, uh, you probably seen me in a good amount of their Instagram posts. Uh, if you s play competitive, I am a competitive player. Uh, I'm a collector, and of course, I'm a content creator. I go to, I pretty much gone to every single event that was scheduled this year and last year for MetaZoo, and same thing with the year before. And I'm actually the one, also the one that did the uh, 2022 uh, content creator community video. Which I kind of do still want to do one this year, but we'll see. I mean, because there's so many good things that's happened this year that I think a lot of people have forgotten. But we'll get to we'll get to that because I feel like out of everybody, and this is no again, there's no jab to anybody. I love everybody in the community, um, even for with people that have issues with me. <laughs> I really don't care because I just be vibing. I'm doing my own thing, and if you have a problem with me, it is what it is. But um, so this is no jab to anybody. Everybody that's made their town hall videos have been great. I've been watching a lot of them. But, and this is not even trying to toot my own horn. The people who have made, like, community videos or, like, done stuff, they're either one side of the spectrum in all of this. Um, they're either a competitive player or a collector or a content creator. Or a partner. That's it. It's, it's either or, or one or two of those things. Um, I'm not a partner, so I, I can't really speak for on the behalf of partners. But I'm pretty much everything else. Uh, I am a collector. I, as you can see back here, um, I am a competitive player. If you see me in tournaments and everything, um, I'm a casual player, and I'm also a content creator. So I feel like out of everything, I've I fit in the bubble in general bubble. So I can I can't speak for a lot of people. And so many people have been reaching out to me when all this stuff happened and asked me, like, what are my thoughts? Is MetaZoo going to go down? Is it going to go under? Like, this is the end of MetaZoo. And I'm just like, relax. <laughs> relax, everybody. And after uh, Mike or whoever is running the Discord on Discord, because uh, I think they've stated it before that either it's always either Mike or Andy that end up running the MetaZoo account, MetaZoo Games account. I don't know. I, I believe I read that somewhere. Or they said that on chat. I don't know. Um, they posted a community letter of pretty much what's going on and what they're going to do looking forward to the 2024. So I've been having a lot of this stuff in my mind. And I felt like it's finally time for me to say something. And a lot of people have been wanting me to. So I posted something on Instagram. And it got a good amount of buzz, uh, people who wanted to actually hear my opinion on, on the matter of everything. And look, if you've seen me in Tormentic stream, which I'm going to go point out right over here somewhere. Um, I, again, I am not a MetaZoo official MetaZoo influencer or an official MetaZoo content creator, as much as I would like to be. Um, I, when I say my criticism, I'm always speak from the heart. Uh, I'm fair because like you can't, you can't be, you can't give constructive criticism without being like at least being constructive, you know? And when I'm seeing a lot of people and, and I know a lot of people started getting mad with MetaZoo and all this stuff happening and then the whole big thing with the artists leaving, everybody, like a lot of content creators started bringing pitchforks and everything. And it's just like. It was such a crazy thing because like, it felt like the whole community was on the ship and people were like banding together and trying to like boycott and start <laughs> wars and everything. And I was even getting people messaging me like having asking me like, oh, are you going to leave MetaZoo? Are you going to so-and-so game and doing all this stuff? I'm just like, what? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> like, bro, I'm I'm fighting, trying to sleep, and you you're asking me if I'm end up in art. I don't, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> so it even took me a while to even understand what's going on at that point. Um, but like I said, like 
being like when I was talking in Tormenta Extreme to him and TCG Islands, you have to be fair, but you have to give feedback, but constructively. Because there's other people that when all this stuff started happening, they just burnt bridges, they were talking shit, and they were just like, they weren't bringing anything to the table. And this, like, again, this isn't shots to anybody. Um, I, I, you know, it's, it is what it is. People have their own opinions and people have their versions of other people's in their minds. Um, and that's, that's always how it's going to be. Like, for example, for me, you can ask people about me and some people will be like, oh, he's a cool guy. He's great. He's fun to play with. Some other people might say he's an asshole, which they're not wrong. <laughs> I am an asshole. But you're never going to please everybody. And I think that's what people are forgetting is that you're not like we, we this is something that it's always bothered me is that people tend to forget we have so much access to to MetaZoo, to like Andy, to Mike and everything because of this Discord. No other TCG, like especially big brand TCGs, have access to the the president, the owner and everything. The fact that they're they're even talking to us and doing these MetaZoo hours and everything, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. And from the from what I'm seeing from this letter is that they're actually listening. Now, I will like before we even get to the letter, I do want like I said I want to say some things that's happened this whole year because I've been through everything. I've been through the towers. I've competed in the towers. I've been to the cons. I've been to the conventions. I've been to the uh, to the events where they were uh, like the Mothman Festival and everything. Like I've been to all these things, even like the year before. And it was such a roller coaster. Like, like for example, Roswell. Roswell was promised so much that everybody got excited. Like, and literally, I remember talking to my locals, like everybody in my locals that didn't want to go, but I was like, yo, this is Roswell, New Mexico. And I know a lot of people were like, oh, there's nothing to do with Roswell and everything. They're like, okay, so like this is New Mexico, this is like where fucking aliens were, like, I've never been, and I want to enjoy it myself, and I met so many great people going there, like, literally, I, that's one of the first days I met Kai, because he ended up driving with me with my friend Mason, and that's how me and Kai gained our friendship, we bonded, same thing with, uh, Smitty, my boy, Metazoo Collector, um, and I met Moldy Potions there, which, fun, my favorite experience is, Literally being half awake and getting like two hours of sleep, and then waking up to a huge, tall, tall motherfucker coming up to me and just say like, "Hey man, want some eggs?" and just doing a little peace sign. And I was just like, "Okay, <laughs> sure, why not?" <laughs> and we were just talking and everything. He was like, "Hey, I know your voice. You're the Demon Fergus, right?" I was just like, "Yeah." I was just like, "You're like, like John Medizu, um, uh, Metal Bros and everything." And it's just like just those things. It's just like, it was just awesome. Now, again, it sucked because I know that there was a lot of stress, uh, especially for the judges. My friend, um, PB, uh, PB Magnet, um, he was a judge for the event, and everybody was asking for promos because we were promised promos and spoiler, spoiler packs and everything, and nothing happened. And what was worse is that they had big streamers and everything um, come out and they were pretty much opening staff spoiler packs, spoiler packs, everything. And all of us were just standing there at the table just like, okay. Because it was so funny because I, I, I forgot who it was that one of the streamers was just like, yeah, get hyped, everybody. We're opening this pack. And I'm just like, Nobody was like excited. It was just like, I guess we'll just starve while you guys eat. <laughs> but it was just like it's it is what it is. But and then after the event and everything, we still had a blast. Like me and my group, we had a blast. I was going around, hanging out, talking with everybody, and then 
after at night, we're just like pretty much had people over. We just we were just having a good time, and I love the scavenger hunt. Like the scavenger hunt that they did with the pa- uh, the passports was amazing. I wish they bring it back because I'm pretty sure, and I'm calling it now. I'm pretty sure I'm if not me, maybe I think I've been told one other person. Me and one other person are the closest to completing the passport. If I would have gone to either the San Diego Comic Con or the New York Comic Con of last year or the year before, I would have had the passport done. I would have been the first person to get it done. But at the time, I never thought I would ever be able to go to any of those huge cons, like the, my upbringing and everything. It was wild, but we'll get to that. But I like they had they had some points in there, but like for me, it's just like, hey, I mean, I understand people didn't get it because at the end of the day, there was money to be made. I mean, like people had fun and it was fun, but like some people did unfortunately rely on those promos to make back their money because it's like, cool, I get it. You go to collect, and I go to collect too, but it's just like you also understand ha- have to understand the logistics of things. Like people rely on these promos to at least reimburse themselves for the event because it's like it's costly luckily for me i drove only eight hours in my own car with my friends and we went and it was fun i documented everything again check out my tech talk and my instagram they're all there the videos are there and it was just a blast just making those memories with the people in the community and that's what sparked it all for especially for me but like for also for so many people and it became a family reunion just going to all these events and to me that was my job as a content creator is just i know i am fortunate enough to go to these events and to do all these things and not a lot of people can and i've gotten i've gotten dms and everything's like man i wish i could go and wish i could do that I like i live by your videos and that to me is like all right cool i'm doing a good thing i'm doing what i'm supposed to i'm i'm doing great but at the end there was so much stuff promised like especially mike showing up like literally i think like the hour the last hour before them but shit happens and unfortunately that did leave a sour taste in a huge majority of the of the community and it is what it is so now going to seance and then of course we got the product the product issues where it was just like cool full uh heavy really heavy box heavy hollow boxes or heavy reverse hollow boxes and then heavy spell books that shit happens i don't know who i have to tell and like again i've like i've played every single card game every single major card game pokemon Yu Gi Oh, magic dragon ball super digimon every single major card game and I tell you, every single one has issues. Like, for example, the f- huge issue that Pokemon had recently, where when Evolving the Skies came out, nobody was getting hits, and they were like, man, they really short-printed everything. But in reality, it was literally some guys in the manufacturers here in Texas, which, fortunately, everything happens here in Texas in TCG, good and bad. Uh, they stole all the hits from Fusion Strikes and hit and uh, Evolving Skies, and they, for some reason, thought it was a bright idea to just go to one card shop and sell all the freaking hits to there. And then the, the card shop ended up contacting, I think, Pokemon and the authorities, and then they got caught. Who would have thought? But that happened, and I bought, like, two cases worth, like, a case or two worth of freaking uh, booster boxes no hits the only kid i got was a secret rare uh, alternate art of that big robot looking motherfucker and he had like a tree on him and that was it that was the literally the only alt heart hit i think i still have it on twitch or something and that will literally kill pokemon for me because it's like that's not possible that is not possible that i literally just get one hit out of this goddamn booster boxes and then it's like you could also talk about pool rates and everything, but every card game has their flaws. And unfortunately, it is what it is. But the difference is those major companies don't really care. They don't. And they might burst some of y'all's bubble, but, like, they don't care. As long as, as soon as they get their money, it's out of their hands. Pokemon could have done something about it, but they didn't. They're just like, oh, not our problem. We got our cards back, though. But no reimbursements, no nothing no apology like literally it was just l- the only way people found out about that whole issue was because of 
TikToker, TikTokers and YouTubers and everything. That was it. No Pokemon official statements. If there was, then it's not a my, part of my knowledge. But nothing. But, okay, cool. MetaZoo has their issues, and they saw it, and it was like, hey, we're testing the waters. We're testing different manufacturers. We understand the issues. We apologize and everything. They acknowledged it, and it, it is what it is. Same thing with the Kickstarter one. Because see, like dude, we gotta, we gotta understand things happen. The Kickstarter, people weren't getting their stuff. Pe- things were happening, and then we find out that it was part of their partners, with, uh, um, the uh, poker people that ended up not uh, manufacturing everything. And there's those issues on that. And then Medizu made it up to those who didn't get it. And of course, I, it sucks that some people still probably hasn't gotten it. I know people are still messaging it. And then sometimes I kind of don't believe all of them because it's just like. Some people just fuel the hate. It is what it is. But unfortunately, there are people that do show proof that, hey, I still haven't gotten my stuff. But medicine look like they still take try to take care of a good amount of those people. And they ended up pulling, uh, making them, them themselves, which, let's be honest, their version was 100 times better than the ones that they did with the partnered, uh, partnered poker place. Because, man, those cards were so beautiful. Like, the ones that MetaZoo did, the hollow pattern and everything. I was just like, God, I wish my order was fucked. (laughs) But stuff happens. And I think everybody just needs to understand that. But, again, don't don't, don't get me wrong. I will. I mean, there is still fault on them. Like, their stuff, the way they handled a good amount of the things could have been handled a lot more. I do honestly believe um, they probably need a PR team because there are some ways that they could have handled a lot of things, but it's because of the open communications that we have with them that there really isn't a filter. Because, I mean, we've seen the gut screenshots, we've seen it all where someone from MetaZoo said something and someone from the community takes it and it's just like, oh, fuck. And then it's just like, maybe you could have thought it a few seconds to to word that differently or <laughs> or just think it over but that's that's how it is when you um when you do everything like instantly and that's that's unfortunate that's the unfortunate side of everything happens at that moment so but that's the whole point of the whole com- open communications we have access to them and fortunately you know shit happens we're we're human at the end of the day we're everybody's human mike and andy and them they're, they're not robots they're not they're not going to know every single thing as much as they want to. So I do understand a little bit when they're like, when people are like, oh, this is my order number. Why haven't I got it? I'm just like, bro, I, that is that is not my jurisdiction and what I'm doing. Talk to community service and, and then maybe I can reach out for them for you. That's it. But <laughs> it's crazy. And then I think here's a little small thing. It's just like it's also funny to me when uh, other content creators get – asked about stuff like when is this coming like i ordered this it's just like bro we don't work for metazoo <laughs> we don't do anything with metazoo like we're just making videos like why are you messaging me about your order that hasn't shipped i, I don't know <laughs> so that that's always been a funny thing to me so again there's faults but i feel like the people are blaming too much blame on them and i don't see why there's that's the issue but you know, give and take. There's both sides of the spectrum. Now, fast forward to Salem. They heard the concerns. Now, I remember building up to Salem. Um, everybody talking about that. And everybody, I know a lot of people in the community were just like, mm, nah, I don't want to go. I don't want to do that. After Browswell, that's not for me. I don't want anything to do with that. And I was just like, I want to go. I've never been to Browswell. I've never been to Salem. I've, I mean, it might it might suck, but fuck it. Why not? Why not go? And I am so glad I did it. Again, shout out to my boy Smitty, uh, Smoke Squad Collectives, for uh, giving me an entry because of the partners that were able to go. They were given two entries to, to go in there, and I was selected as one of the people from um, Smoke Squad. And the other person was uh, Lucy, which I – amazing person i love her to death so cool we keep in touch still from that day but it was so cool because like that's how i met her in the community and it was great like 
driving up to, and I drove. This is what I'm telling you. I drove to all, mostly all of these events. I've flown to a couple of them, but literally from last year and this year, I drove to every, mostly every single major event because it's fun. I love driving, and again, this is I'm, I'm an insomniac, so it benefits me to drive because it's just like who I'm just driving most of my, and then I have great company. I got the uh, the homies over. I got the homies over at ATZ going with me in most of these events. So big shout out to those guys, amazing people. But we drove, we drove to Salem. It was pretty cheap since it was all three of us, and we got there. Uh, it took us, I think, like two day, like uh, twenty four hours because we just went nonstop just driving, and it was awesome. Like it was, it blew my expectations out the water. Like the way they. They handled everything, and um, again, they did the scavenger hunts, which please, please, for the love of God, please bring that back. <laughs> the scavenger hunt so much fun because the way we're able to talk to so many of the stores, the locals, and everything, and show impacts, and again, the videos right here, go check it out. And I met so many great people in the community because of because of Salem, and driving up there. And it, like seeing how everything was, it, was, it felt like straight up out of Halloween Town. Like this city, like strived on the month of Halloween, and seeing everybody get festive and seeing everything pop, especially after like the kids were gone at night, and it was just pretty much just adults, and it was just like, yo, this it was a complete 180, and it was so cool. And being there that weekend. And talking to the artists, getting stuff signed. Unfortunately, I couldn't because I ended up waiting super late to get my stuff signed. So that's on me. But um, meeting so many great people. I met Epic uh, the first day, the first time there. Uh, same thing with Charles Farley and my boy uh, Metazoo Drew, uh, who owns the uh, Uncut Sheet. Amazing guy. We keep in touch. And again, I met Lucy there. And so, like, it was such a blast. And it was... It was it blew my expectations the way they handled everything the way that they were giving people cards and the way um, we were seeing the like the spoilers and everything and then doing the scavenger hunt and I even got my tarot cards read by a, a random uh, old lady that apparently didn't work at the shop so it was it was it was an experience and it's just like stuff like that it's just like it's what I believe is what Metazoo is because of how the community treats it and the way everybody was just like it just it just feels like a family reunion it feels like a gathering and everything and then you're driving home on our way back um and i also met like my boy met his new chef loved the guy and just driving back home it was cool and i was like yo i hope they do this for the next one and then that's when pretty that pretty much wrapped up 2022 and now going to 2023 we still had a couple more hiccups with medicine. Now, they, that's when they introduced the roadmap. This is going to be a long video, by the way. So I hope you guys are into it. The roadmap is, I feel, what was the downfall for everything. Uh, they were announcing all these things where they were saying, like, okay, yeah, we're going to have a tower every month. We're going to do everything. I post the roadmap here. Uh, then we're going to introduce a show. We're going to kick off the show. We're going to start um, doing the online client. The online client is going to be released and everything. Like, so much stuff was being released in such little time. And I was like, dang, were they doing this all of last year while they're doing the conventions and everything? Like, this is crazy. Or 2021, which whatever you want to consider Kickstarter or first edition. This is a new game that just came out. And they're already doing huge tournaments that, again, they're doing prize pools for, like, life-changing money. And I don't care... If you're rich or whatever, and you say, like, oh, it's not a lot. Like, it, that is. As, a, as In a card game, that is crazy amount of money. That could change people's lives. And if you don't think that, then eat a bad get. I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Because, like, the fact that they were doing, like, uh, $20,000 prize events or 30000 50000 and then doing all these huge amounts of monies for these tournaments, which would kind of con be considered as regionals. No other card game does that. 
no other card game has these huge amounts of cash pools, especially for these, I mean, quote-unquote, kind of regional events. Pokemon doesn't do that. Yu-Gi-Oh! doesn't do that. They do, like, maybe 10000 or 5000 even for the big ones, but like cause their money is in their cards, the promo cards, the the tournament championship cards. Those are what the big the big money is for them. But Metazoo is out here having these huge cash pools, and it's just like this is wild. And the fact that they were free on top of that, they were free. That is insane. And I I I like I even told a bunch of people like this isn't gonna last <laughs> with them doing free tournaments um they're definitely gonna be they're gonna charge you sooner or later and i was okay with them charging us especially like 50 bucks or whatever and they ended up doing that i think flame tower is when they started and i was 100 percent okay with it because it's like 50 dollars for a chance to win twenty thousand. Y- yeah sign me up no questions asked but we'll uh, we'll get to those towers later but uh we we got the water tower we went, I got the road map, and with them saying all these things, all these towers going to be up, especially back to back to back, I already knew this wasn't going to be possible. Because, again, you got to understand, one, they got to get the venue. One, they, uh, two, they got to get a venue big enough for everybody. Three, they got to dish out all these prize amount, th- this cash prizes. And then four, they got to give everybody a chance to, like, get these get these days going because it's like that's a lot of pto time for for us adults who work nine to five 24 7 like like non-stop working it's just like you gotta ask for a couple days off or a couple weekends and if you don't work if you work weekends that's a lot of stuff that you're requesting but again it's like the whole risk and reward kind of situation where it's like cool i can call off a couple of days but i could make that money back yeah, I mean, why not? So, but the roadmap they've had was it was was just like I don't think it was possible, and we saw that it wasn't. I don't like I don't care when people are talking about speculations and all that stuff. We have the proof in the pudding. This year was the proof that that their roadmap wasn't going to work. They it was way too ambitious, and I'm just going to go out and say that. It was way too ambitious because, cool, we had pretty much every Aura Tower leading up to Caster Cup. Besides, I think a couple of them weren't going to make it. I think, like, Light, Forest, uh, um, Frost, the Arcade Series. Then we had the Revive for Native, Hero Quest 3. We had Comic-Con, Crypto Nation, Book 1, the animated shorts in July. We had war in August with Revive War. Then we had September MetaZoo Online Client. We had October's SCP with New York Comic Con. Then we had the Streamer Kits 2.0. And then we had the Comics and Seven Seas in December, which is now. Then, on top of that, we also had the tournament, the competitive scene. Which was going to be March is going to be Loveland Frogman Native was going to be the release party and recent release party for Earth. Then we had the whole deck festival in F- Forest Flame, which ended up being Dallas. Then we had Lightning for July, August Spirit, Mothman Dark, and then Caster Cup at New York Comic Con. That's already a lot, a lot. So, let's go with the product roadmap first. We've seen, I, th- I believe, I, I, re- I believe the native, I mean the revive boards did come out that time. Or at least February, July, one of those two. The streamer kits never happened. As much as we wanted to, the streamer kits never happened. Everybody pre-ordered it. Everybody was waiting patiently. No show. Never happened. And... I think that's what really sparked the the fuel and I guess we can call it the Metazoo hate 2023. Because that sparked everything. Because we didn't get any kits. People weren't getting refunds because I think there was like a 23 day policy or something like that. 
and then we were getting no word, no communications, no infos. Everybody was mad. A lot of people were mad, and they're justified with that. And the reason they're justified with that is because if you announce something and nothing happens, and then you go blank, you go dark, as a as somebody that buys from the second market, that's that's you're pretty much ghosting. You're ghosting everybody. It is what it is, and that's why this is. We want to talk about constructive criticism. But we got to talk about the bad, and we also are talking about the good. Those things never happened. The streaming kits never happened. So many people were mad, and we had nothing to show for it. And then they decided to push it back, and which is okay, cool. It's understandable because. We were supposed to get it with war because it was supposed to have spoilers for war because they had the playmats. I think they had, uh, what was it, um, spoiler packs for it and nothing. And it was supposed to be going to streamers or people who, pretty much anybody who bought it. And it was supposed to get a bunch of info for it. So, yeah, the, the, the boards did happen. I'm looking through the pretty much the announcements because they don't delete anything, which is good because we're able to see everything there. But um, just looking through it and we got nothing. We got like a couple of teasers or what we're expecting from the uh, the streamer kids. Yeah, so the streamer kids, they announced it literally um, on February. Uh, Medizu Games posted it. They said, uh, Streamer Kids will include 10 random booster packs, one exclusive box topper, one of five possible promos, one exclusive collectible coin, 60 exclusive sleeves, 10 exclusive stickers, one exclusive uh, puzzle piece, five exclusive display stands, one exclusive playmat, uh, one of three playmats, and uh, these go on sale Ooh, tomorrow at the Medizu Marketplace. And so oh, yeah, well, they did go on sale, but. Pretty much there were pre-orders and stuff. But they, then they never happened. And the playmats, they, of course, they, the thing is, is that they had, on the picture, it was like native streamer kids. So it had the pictures of the the, the packs, which I'm, ge I'm guessing the cards were, um, they had the brand of the streamer kids, which is just a camera on them. And they had promos, they had the stickers. But the playmat showed two different types of Mothmans. And there were supposed to be spoilers for pretty much for war and everything. But we didn't get anything. We ha still haven't even gotten the playmat and the uh, the binder for Native, now that you think about it, like they normally do. But, alright. So, streamer kits never happened. That sparked pretty much... The huge major uproar and the spark of everything. <laughs> we got the gala. The gala was I was the gala was fun to sell. I don't like everybody was kind of was 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 having a good time. Everybody was vibing. Uh, I will say though, um, I felt like they could have they shouldn't have made it uh, like tux oriented when there was people still wearing not like they're wearing business casual. I think I saw a couple of people just wearing normal clothes, and I was just like, eh. I feel like that would have been more suited, especially where we were. Like, when they said gala, I think everybody interpreted, like, you know, tables, everybody was going to sit down, eat, and everything, and then start bidding, because I think that's how it was supposed to be. But and then it ended up kind of feeling like a, like a nightclub and everything. But everybody was fun. It, it was still fun. I, I had a blast with it. Now, I will say the Earth Tower. The Earth Tower was still okay. It was fun. It was still fine. The only issue is that it was strictly pay to win. And I t again, I'm not I'm not going to really name drop people and everything. But when I talked to some people in MetaZoo, like some of the staff, they even agreed with me. It was extremely and I do I I do um I do appreciate that they did agree, agree with me because of the drop of it. Native being this Earth Tower was straight up extremely pay to win because if you weren't a partnered player, if, if you weren't a sponsored player by a partner, you were pretty much screwed. Now, I will say though, there was, I think, one or two people that ended up making 
uh, top 32 or top 8 even without being a partner. And, hey, kudos to you. Good shit. But, unfortunately, everybody else that made it top 32 was pretty much straight up just partnered. And, there's again, there's nothing wrong with that. There is extremely nothing wrong with that. Hey, you, you put the work. You put the effort. You deserve to be there. Again, this is not bashing anybody. This is just the circumstances of a lot of shit. So keep that in mind. Those people who got to where they were deserved every single bit of it. And but unfortunately for the for the masses, especially like for people who are competitive players who tried to get the who relied on partners to get the product, a lot of us weren't seeing anything. Like some of us who were part like were partnered, uh bought from partners. Unfortunately, most of those people were partnered with sponsor players and they're like, Hey, I gotta take care of my team but it's just like at the same time it's just like what about us? Like we need these sets, we need these boxes. And if you weren't if you weren't a partner that went to net uh to uh New York at the time, you weren't gonna get your stuff. Uh, you weren't gonna get your team stuff or you the people weren't gonna get anything. So it's just like that drove the prices so high. And uh, but luckily we had some like here in Texas, which I I, I would say we we're fortunate that we had a good amount of partners here in Texas that got some of their products early. That we were able to get some of the cards, but unfortunately, like, the auras were all only hollow, so they're part of the Native 19, so it was hard to get those cards. And a lot of those cards went skyrocket price, like $100, $200, which is, you know, it's natural. As a competitive player, you, you got to understand that that's always going to happen. If it's a sought-after card and it's necessis- necess- uh, necessary, it's, it's always going to be expensive. It is what it is card games is a pay to win game but unfortunately native they they sh- i would have i would have hoped that and this is going for the future is that they kind of follow me- uh, pokemon's route where a set is in tournament legal a week or two after the set's released to avoid situations like this like i get it it's native we're having a native party and everything why not play these cards? It's going to be awesome. Like, I understand the vision. I get that. But it causes so much discord to the competitive community because you're bringing in cards that a lot of people don't know. And unfortunately, there was rulings uh, that were a part of so many issues that people were getting eliminated because either a judge was making a ruling that ended up not being correct another ruling and then other things were switched around it just caused so much stuff and then i I did i think i do believe that i think they they said that the judges were play testers at the same time but at the same time it's just like there were wrong calls being made and then (laughs) we're not even (laughs) the whole thing at the uh the last the last uh you know the finals my boy herman Herman the goat (laughs) There was so much, like, so much things going on in that match where it was just like, yo, what's going on? Like, everybody was going, like, losing their minds. Everybody. So, it was was an unfortunate event. But it was still, it was still history. History was being made regardless of what happened. I like the location. Little little side note is that there was a, uh, when we had lunch, there was a little small, and the people who went to Earth Tower, I think some of them went there. It was like a little taco shop that was there, and I made the mistake of getting a burger because the taco was amazing, but the taco wasn't it. It was the horchata. The horchata, oh my god. Like, I spent like $6 on that drink, and I was like, alright, you know, alright, cool. But it was like a huge-ass container, and that thing was amazing. Like, I took a sip out of it, and I think it Easton was playing next to me. He's just like, Dan, man, <laughs> you really vibe with that shit. I'm just like, it's it's blowing me away. Like, it was amazing. You know, Chata is like, for me personally, is like super hard to like get right because it's either too powdery or too milky or or whatever. Or sometimes it tastes like way too chalky. This was just like peak on Chata. I will definitely, if I ever get near that area, I need to remember if I ever go back to New York, I need to ch- check up that spot again because. Chef Kisses. Yeah, so that happened. Earth, native, done for the books. It was great. Um, but yeah, it's extremely super heavy play to pay to win. That's what it is. But 
going forward, I do hope that MetaZoo does the whole set doesn't release, or at least don't <laughs> don't let sets be legal for especially like these big events because like you got to give us moments, you got to give us time to like understand to learn these cards, especially like cool we had the gala, and then we had the tournament right after. But again, it's like you know you didn't have to go to the gala, but at the same time, it's like why are you not going to the gala? It's just there's a lot of stuff. Then Hero Quest happened. Hero Quest was cool. I don't think there really was any delay with that. But and then we go to uh, July, which um, again we'll, we'll do the towers separate from the um, the product list. We had the MetaZoo book and then the animated shorts. Never happened. I think they were talking about like voicing people from the community to voice in the sets because I know Mike was really passionate about having people in the community which you know your boy doesn't get into the code uh, they they wanted to do stuff like that but we haven't really got anything we did get the comic though so I guess I mean it's better late than never uh, the online client which sort of happened we uh, we got to play test it in uh, Mothman Festival, which again, check out the video. Um, we ended up getting the mo uh, the beta test for the online client, which was fun. And speaking as experience as somebody who's played every single, I guess, uh, build uh, that was publicly available, man, they did amazing work. Like I am really excited, and I'm really excited for this game like this game is so fun uh, playing it from from dark towers to uh, which was the other location I think it's oh yeah from uh, New York Comic Con and then to Houston collect uh, collect con amazing it was amazing and then now playing it on the beta because I got the email so much fun I enjoy it they've worked so hard and they you can see the work that they do with every build and they did a great job so card IO chef kiss you did amazing SCP and New York Comic Con SCP is technically still hasn't happened although I think believe that they did say that they're trying to do it in December which I don't see how we're already midway through it and I don't think we have any information about that but nothing um, we did get a surprise set which was the Hello Kitty which Kuromi set which ended up causing another huge pile in the MetaZoo hate of 2023 um, and it all started with the uh, July San, uh, San Diego Comic Con and this is this is something that I, I guess I, I am not blaming MetaZoo at all this is a card. This is this. You gotta understand. This is a huge IP. This is the second highest. I believe it's the second highest grossing IP in the world. And the fact that they looked at the MetaZoo and they're like, "Hey, we want to be a part of you. We we, we like what you're doing. We want to see what you're doing, and we want to do it. We want to test the waters, give you, and do some pack uh, promos and see where it goes." The fact that, and this is something that. I don't believe people are giving medicine too much credit is the fact that so many people, even if they're reselling it or, or even collecting it, whatever, there was a lot of eyes on medicine that weekend. And the fact that they had to, they, they got threatened to get freaking shut down so many times because so many people were going for it. And cause like, that's the whole thing. It's just like, that's the buzz. That's the beauty of it. That's that's what's crazy about medicine is that they do all these things. Like every event is just like, people go straight to medicine. Even for like the the promos and everything, even if it's just for resale value, or just to collect it, or just getting people in, like just seeing that happen is phenomenal. And I haven't seen any other card game match that energy. It's well, new card game at least, because I mean, no other card game really does circuits like that nowadays, uh, especially like the huge ones. I mean, they have their own, but those are like clearly separate events or tournaments. But I'm strictly talking about new card game from 2020 and up no other card game has done that like MetaZoo knows how to build up a crowd and we have the proof in the pudding and the comic cons both comic cons showed it those promos were going crazy 
the team did phenomenal. The artwork was beautiful. And I'm not I'm not mad at them for bumping SCP for Hello Kitty. Although I I love SCP. I love the the lore behind all those things. The fact that it's a open source for anybody can make a fucking SCP and then do something about that. And then the fact that we're getting a card game for that is crazy. And them bumping it for the Karomi script, the carnival, especially for um, New York Comic Con and everything. We don't know why. And there's a lot of people just saying a lot of things like, oh, this is happening. Like, they're bumping everything. Sanrio's taking over. It's like, look, we don't know what's happening in closed doors. And I'm glad we don't. Because for all we know, Metazoo could have had their tie hands tied. They could have been like, hey, if you don't do this, uh, we'll, we like what, what happened in, uh, in San Diego. Let's, let's make a set. Let's do a set. We want a set now. And maybe they were pushed to do so. and But we don't know. That could have screwed up war because that's literally a set, be like a core set between war and and uh, Karomi script the carnival. They might have had to push so many artwork for war. We don't know. Unless until Metazoo says something about it and then they start telling everybody like, yeah, like we had to do stuff. We had to shift stuff. We have to. And again, I haven't read the letter that they posted to Metazoo. So a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about. Could be fixed and concerned, but I'm I want to go with it at a fresh take before I get to that news cover. So bear in mind, all right. So Crypto Carnival, which I had a blast in New York. <laughs> uh New York was crazy. Uh it was a dream come true. Like again, I've never thought in a million years I would ever go to these kind of a huge cons because of how like crazy it is, like money wise, financial wise and everything. And just being able to go to New York Comic Con, especially for that full weekend, it was a dream come true. Like, my, my inner child was crazy. But the fact that I went as a content creator and did all that stuff, it was even more awesome. And I met so many of you guys, uh, like, people, like, I would talk to some, like, I was talking to Drew, and then people were recognize my voice. And it was just like, <laughs> it, it's still kind of new to me, like, getting recognized. Because I don't post my face in a lot of my content. And so, like, this is also new. But, like, I use my voice, and a lot of people recognize it. And then when I did videos with uh, Cast Society, um, reading the comments and hearing people how they enjoyed those cryptid videos. And then also, speaking of October, like, the the uh, cryptid, cryptid lore of, of uh, Cryptober was oh so fun. I had a blast making those videos because so many people enjoyed it. So many people enjoyed the cryptids. And everything, and hearing about their their origins and all that, and it was fun. It was fun doing those things, and I definitely need to get back because I want to finish every set of uh, MetaZoo that I can with every Cryptid Carnival, Cryptid lore, and then work my way up to Seven Seas once we get to there. But yeah, I had a blast in New York. I went with my best friend Zombie. Uh, I, I was able to take her there, and we had a blast. We got the promos. We got the uh, the Mothman, which is around here somewhere. But we got the box. We got our little promos, and we also got some of these beautiful cards signed and doodled, which finally came in. I'm I'm actually gonna be working on a video. For, I wanted to do an unboxing video for them, but we ended up getting our cards in. Like, look at this beautiful Mothman doodled and signed by Kelsey, which I actually opened this at New York. I got one random uh, three-plaque native blister big box uh, at Target because we went, because I wanted to get something signed because they announced that they were uh, doing the whole authenticated promos and I wanted to get these cards. Uh, so I was like, you know what? I got some perfect cards to get graded. Like, let's hope we pull something because I didn't bring any MetaZoo cards with me. And we pulled this out of the big box. Which was crazy. This was like the last pack magic, and we pulled it, and it was it was phenomenal. And I, I'm really like just like memories like that is just what I love, I enjoy. So I had a blast in New York. Forward to November, nothing really happened. And here on the roadmap it says November streaming kits. Still no word. Nothing going on. And of course December. MetaZoo Comics and Seven Seas, which the MetaZoo Comics did happen. 
the Menace of comics did happen. They're in Webtoon, and they are great comics. They're really good. And I think uh, when I talk to Term- Termentic, I think uh, we should be once we I think we hit next year, we start 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 seeing something different from the books that's already been happening. So it's it's uh, it's gonna be exciting. So that was pretty much the content. I mean the uh, the product line of the of the 2023 uh, product line from Native. I mean for Metazine. Unfortunately, a good chunk of that didn't happen. A good chunk did happen. Uh, I like random stuff happened, but it was interesting. And I I think the ones that were more I think in line of not happening was the towers. Now, the fact that they had so many towers leading up to Dark Tower was great, but the fact that they were literally back to back to back to back to back to back to back, that is where I had an issue and I didn't think that was going to happen. And it did it. We had the Frogman Festival, which did happen. Water Tower, first tower, and I f- it went pretty good. I would say, like, starting it off, I mean, there was a little bit of shaky parts here and there, but overall it went great ended up opening some packs with a uh <laughs> with a uh state trooper which blew my mind again check out my instagram uh we ended up de- we ended up getting pulled over and we ha- opened some metazoo packs with them so that was pretty cool uh we had the earth tower the native release gala and we all know how that went talked about that then this is where things went missing we had the uh, Forest Tower in Holdak Festival. Didn't happen. Flame Tower in June. Didn't happen. Uh, July, Lightning Tower. Didn't happen. But we ended up having the Flame Tower instead in Dallas, which was great. Uh, I personally think it was great, The especially coming from the native, uh, the Earth Tower the flame tower because it was like cool texas is hot and it was hot and just seeing everybody getting used to that weather people were sweating outside (laughs) it was crazy but the venue and everything was fantastic it was great and i felt like that might be a good venue for the caster cup now it's like it's not i'm not not even trying to be biased uh dallas i believe is the best place to have the caster cup we already had it the first time Maybe a different venue. The venue that we had it in Flame Tower, I actually enjoyed it. It was huge. It was spacious. It was fun. And then we ended up doing something that was different. We finally started having side events. That side event was hosted by my homie Mateo. That's uh, that's a partner with uh, that p- pretty much partnered with Metazoo. And we had a short tournament that had a bunch of the uh, promos and everything. And it was fun. It was great. The fighting tower was fast as hell. <laughs> Pretty much, it was like, yo, it was a, it was, it was a luck base. It was straight up a luck base. I'm, I'm, it, let's be honest, it was a luck base tower. If you rolled a six on burn, you got it. And if you rolled a one on burn, you lost. Or if you got no aura, which was a, t- a bunch of my cases where I had no aura, it is what it is. But then it was okay because I ended up scrubbing out and then. We had the side events, and then we had fun at the side events. I was having fun. I was meeting so many people. I had fun playing against other t- uh, other partner teams. It was cool. I had a great experience, and I wish Medizu would do that more. And we, I think they kind of did. They were at least trying to in the Dark Tower, but side events. We need side events. Side events are the fun thing. Cause like, look, again, people come all over the U.S. to these events. Same thing with the Water and Earth Tower. And if you, as a competitive player, you know if you lose three or four matches, you're done. You're not bubbling in. You're not getting into the top ta- uh, top 32. It's out. It's over. So you're pretty much done for the day. You're you're just gonna be literally supporting your friends, which of course you got to be there to support your friends. But you have nothing else to do. Nothing going on. Yeah, of course we can get stuff signed. We can do stuff. But that's it. We don't want to bug the artists every every now every day. And just being there, I was just like, okay, well, I'm here for MetaZoo. I'm not really here for anything else. What am I supposed to do? Side events. Every major TCG has side events. And 
maybe that that and I feel like that is something that we need to incorporate because like cool. For example, I'm not saying me, but like maybe some other person's like I love tournaments. I feel like I can make it as a competitive player, but I'm not there yet. But uh, maybe I'm not there for a big pod, but maybe a eight man booster box booster box tournament or maybe a, a, a gift bag tournament, like little pods like that. That way we can get the ball rolling for people who have something to do, have fun, and and cherish that memory. And that's what happened in Flame Tower. People were having fun playing different decks at Flame Tower who brought decks. It was just like people were still running the fi- flame, flame decks, but a lot of people had their own personal decks that they were using, and they were just having fun with it. It was a fun experience, and I wish going forward if we started doing more tournaments. Again, I haven't read the board map, so maybe... This is in line with the map what uh, uh, Medizu posted on Discord. But please, bring side events. Side events are fun. Side events are great, and they give people to do. Then, that was the only towers that happened. Those three were the only ones, because we didn't have the lightning, we didn't have the forest, and we didn't have spirit and uh, long peak. And the big one, <laughs> Caster Cup. And I know that was pretty much that broke the camel's back for competitive players. Castle Cup didn't happen. And unfortunately, I will say this, though. You got to understand, as a meta zoo, uh, someone who enjoys meta zoo, you got to understand, not everything is fully finalized. And you got to at least know a little better. It's sad, sad to say that, but we're going to say it. I knew for a fact that it was, too, again, this was too ambitious for meta zoo to do. Every tower, month to month to month to month to month, and then Caster Cup, especially with New York Comic Con, there was no way that was going to happen. I knew it for the start, and I started telling people, like, don't book your stuff until, like, literally a minute or two, uh, like, uh, uh, or, like, the month of, because, unfortunately, we got to understand. And plus, it's like, we saw the, how the towers were going. Like, a lot of those towers were getting canceled left and right. Come on. Like, don't, 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 don't. And it sucks to say that, but be honest with yourselves. It didn't happen. So, Caster Cup happened, and a lot of people were mad. And I was, and this is where I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't happen in New York Comic Con. Because, one, I know I get it as a competitive player. I'm only here for com- New York Comic Con. But as a content creator and a collector, I want to enjoy New York Comic Con. And they even stated it themselves. And this is what I, I will back up MetaZoo with. MetaZoo said it themselves that they weren't char- like you weren't charging. They weren't charging people to play at the tournament. So you didn't have to buy a ticket for New York Comic Con, which I know a lot of people did. And they were super pissed that they did. And they're like, well, now I have all these tickets. I'm like, no, no, no. That's on you. That is on you for assuming that. Because MetaZoo stated themselves that you do not need, I even asked my, myself in the, fu- in, I think in the comments, they're like, you don't need a ticket to get to Caster Cup for Comic Con. So you don't need a New York Comic Con ticket to play in the Caster Cup. That was it. They, they announced that and they said it themselves. So the fact that a lot of people, when they said that they weren't having Caster Cup in New York Comic Con, were mad because they bought tickets, they bought hotels and everything, and it's like, cool. Well, guess what? You can still go. You can go to New York Comic Con and have fun and enjoy yourselves. Now you don't have to worry about the Comic Con. And I get it. You're a competitive player. You're not there to just have fun and do all this stuff. Well, it's like, okay, cool. Then the alternative is that you ask to get reimbursed, which a lot of places I did uh, talk to a couple people. They said that they were easy to get their money back, that were complaining at first. And then they said, yeah, I called and they easily said, yeah, that's fine. They overbooked anyways. And then that's it. They got full reimbursement. So it's like people were just getting mad for no reason. And uh, that was that, that was the crazy part. So I will back up MetaZoo on this part. And then again, as a competitive player, like, look, you're asking me to pay for Towers Tower, especially if I went from Dark Towers to Castro Cup. Not everybody has money. And this is what I meant about these towers being life-changing money for a lot of people. Is that not everybody has money? Now be be grateful that you ca- can go to these tournaments. That's why for me, like I don't take any of this for granted, because I'm able to go to these tournaments. I'm able to go to these cons. I'm able to go to all these events. So I am never. I'm always. I'm humbled and grateful for being able to go to these events. Not everybody can. So and I I do sympathize with those people that 
decided not to go to any of those towers and then going and that's why a lot of people made it to dark towers because then the medizu stated that hey in order to play in the caster cup you have to at least gone to one of these towers in order to qualify for the caster cup which i agreed i i really like that because if you see what i meant back in the beginning where these towers felt like regional that was it you had to quality you had to play participate in one of these towers to qualify to play in the caster cup because again we're talking about, I think it was like, what, half a mil? Or, yeah, it was half a mil for, for Caster Cup. And then a random person shows up and then be like, yeah, I won Caster Cup. Playing, like, a uh, staple competitive deck. And then, okay, cool, a random person that's not a part of the community wins the Caster Cup. I'm pretty sure you'll be more mad at that than than anything. I, mean, I would. But it's like, cool, being having to compete in the tower to go to Caster Cup. I, I enjoyed that. I, I, I liked that idea. And then they are start they started to charge people, which again, which is understandable. But I will say this though. They charged us fifty dollars. They should have gave us more. Now, like every other card game, like I know like for Pokemon you get um or like at least Yu Gi Oh at the time when I played competitive, you got booster packs and then the play mat. I wish they did the same thing with towers, and maybe they can do that going forward. Because it's like, cool, you advertised caster packs, and you didn't give casters packs. Wait, where is the logic in that? And this is what annoyed the fuck out of me when I was watching that, when I was in those towers. It's just like, you're telling me I'm not getting the pack? Like, what, 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 what is this? Like, yeah, cool. I get the promos, which is great. Uh, again, I love promos, and I'm glad that they did it. And then, plus, charging the community in order to get in helps the market. Because, again, I'm still a collector, and I'm, I'm everything. So, again, you still got to – there's always money involved with everything. And if you don't think that, then you're living under a rock. You can see the price difference from everything, like water – we're seeing a good hundred fifty to hundred fifty dollars around that price point, and for like all the promos and everything, because it's a fan favorite. Water is a fan favorite, uh, core uh, set, uh, cards. Earth wasn't doing that hot. No one really cared. A lot of those auras were going for twenty, which was stupid to me because a lot of people were charging like extremely cheap, which made no sense. It's like, come on, man, you did okay, cool. You didn't make it to, you didn't make it a to day two. And you're selling your promos for less than fifty dollars, forty dollars. So you're not even trying to recoup, like, as a business person, that you don't. That, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why would you tank the market and tank the cards yourself just to make a quick twenty dollars? It's like, all right, cool. You're you're taking a loss. There's no win in that. So it made me laugh. It it blew my mind when people were like, yeah, I'm selling my aura for like twenty dollars, the promo for twenty five, and then the other promo for ten bucks. It was like. Why? Why would you tank the market when people are straight up paying a hundred, hundred fifty dollars for each of the promos? You could have you could have paid your ticket back. So that blew my mind when people were doing that in dark. I mean, for Earth Tower and a little bit in Flame Tower, but a bunch of people. I know my boy, um, my boy uh, Invictus. Shout out to my boy. He sold his for like three hundred dollars, and the man made bank instantly and i told him like hey man just don't be too greedy be fair with the price and see who puts who takes it and then it happened man walked away with 300 bucks only paid 50 bucks so that's a that's a win-win so same thing so that's what i'm saying it's just like cool we get there and it's like you make caster packs and you only put them in the gift bags or the goodie bags it's just like that's cool you could have done it the same way like how you did it with uh and the, uh, like the first caster cups when you had spectator packs and then or collector con packs and then player packs you could have done the same thing there and that's what it was it should have been like and then i'm not even talking about i'm not even being greedy about it it's like you didn't have to give a like us like 10 like y'all did last time it was like five player packs and then five um collector con packs no you could have literally just done one or two packs per person that's it Everybody would have been happy. I know for a fact everybody would have been happy. And then whatever you had extra, do the same thing which I normally do. And I do love that Medizu does this, that they give the packs to the artists. And then the artists are able to sell those packs to, for signatures. Because, you know, we're it's generating 
good money for the artist is uh, generating packs for us we're getting cards signed and everything and then for those who are mad about it it's like you know metazoo does this they've been doing it since like water tower so don't over get over blow your money and then get signatures right off the bat and then at the end of it when they're like all right cool get your stuff signed and then get a pack and then it's like people are like oh well i already got my stuff signed and just like that's your problem <laughs> you see i'm an asshole but yeah, so I wish, but I wish they would have done it. So maybe going forward, give us a pack or two, or even a play mat, because again, we're playing money. And I will say this also: I personally believe the prize pool is extremely high for these for these regional events. Again, because like these tournaments are like, I know everybody's not gonna agree with me. I'm being more logical and more like like seeing it as a business standpoint. That's way too much money for each. Like, just think about it. We had every single one of those towers, and then that's like each of those towers are like ten thousand, and then of course the freaking Caster Cup being fi- uh, hundred, uh, five hundred thousand. That's a lot of fucking money, and for them to just do that every single tournament, I was like, I'm pretty sure money was involved. Where they're just like, hey, let's cut back a bit, which is understandable because it's like, god damn. <laughs> But it's just me. It's just, that's just my personal thing. It's just like I like they could have like I'm pretty like I would have been happy with it being a five thousand uh, dollar tournament <laughs> or a ten thousand dollar tournament, and then that's it. And then divide that equally with the tiers and the product. Then of course we got to talk about the dark tower payments. They didn't happen. They're maybe they're gonna happen this year. Uh, I'm sure in the statements that they talked about it in Discord, which we'll get that we're pretty much wrapping it up, so we are gonna be talking about that right now. Uh, I'm sure that they're, they're they're gonna address that because I'm seeing a lot of good positivity coming out from these videos uh, from from people from Instagram and all that stuff. But. For th- four months, have not anybody receiving their payments for that? That's depressing. That's really depressing, and because it's like a lot of people need that money, and that's that's the unfortunate thing. Like I like I said, like <laughs> anything that they're getting, that th- like this, like the fact that people were able to win money from the tournament, especially like five hundred. And then again, if you're blessed, you're blessed. So I hey, all power to you. God bless and everything. But even five hundred dollars—that's crazy amount of money for a lot of people, and you don't know what people are in their situations. You don't know how people are living their lives. You might not know what kind of blessings they need. So five hundred dollars is a lot for a lot of people. Even a thousand dollars, even whatever. Like this is money that people need. So the fact that people weren't getting that—it's—it was devastating, and I—I I do sympathize for a lot of those people because they—they deserve that money. They worked hard. They got. They went to the event, and the fact that they didn't receive it, that sucks. And it it really sucks that they didn't get it. So I'm hoping that the statement that they posted on the the uh, what is it Discord does talk about that, and hopefully we do see it maybe by the end of the year, maybe by this end of the month, where we see that happening. Because like, I would be heartbroken if I didn't get the money and then especially wasting a good thousand dollars to get there and then not being able to get that money that I need to recuperate that sucks and I sympathize for those people a lot so hopefully we see something happen for that I had a blast in Dark Tower again I played the MetaZoo client which was a lot of fun Um, I ended up going I invited my friend who actually pretty much reintroduced me to MetaZoo when it all started in Nightfall. Um, so bringing him along with me, it was great. It was his first time ever even leaving Texas, like especially far, like far away from Texas. So the fact that we were able to like enjoy that memory and we we had a blast. We ended up uh, once day one was over because we, we, we went, I, I wanted to experience the uh, the Mothman Festival. And when I went to go try to get the Mothman promos, 
I was seeing a huge line because I wanted to take a picture with the Mothman. But there was a huge line, and I was like, I ain't waiting in that line to take a picture with a fucking statue. And then on top of that, I'm in the tournament, so I can't really go do that. And I remember I seen me, Tormentic, and some of the, uh, a couple of the uh, love, uh, lads of Loveland running over there, like sprinting. And if it wasn't for my walks, which if you ain't checking my Instagram, you know your boy trying to get a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> I was walking. If it wasn't for my walks, I would have been screwed. Man. Your boy would have been like, <laughs> please wait. I would have been dead. And I was in like full injured cold cosplay, which was actually also my work attire, so. Which, fun fact, the, his first, uh, Injured Cold's first encounter was on my birthday, November 2nd. So that's even more crazy. So, again, Medizine, if you're l- watching this, which I hope you are. I hope you are, Medizine. Because constructive criticism. You know, I love you guys. You guys are the homies. Injured Cold. But, um, <laughs> I, I, we ended up going to, um, after the tournament, we ended up taking a couple of pictures. And then we ended up, I ended up, uh, my friend helped me record a couple of things we ended up using for the uh, October, uh, Cryptober event, which was I used for crypt, uh, Injured Code's video, uh, video. So it was cool. I ended up cosplaying him, making the video and all that. And then we ended up taking photos, which I post right here. We ended up taking photos of us, like, posting up with the statue and everything. And we ended up meeting a, uh, a couple of people there, too who do podcasts for cryptids and all that stuff. So it was cool. We were talking about MetaZoo. They were talking to us about their stuff and how the cryptid community and all that stuff. And they've heard a little bit about MetaZoo, but they've never really got any info. So, of course, me as a content creator and somebody who's passionate about MetaZoo, I told them about it. And that's the important thing about this, that everywhere I went to, all these events that I've gone to, I've always talked about MetaZoo. Because I love it. I love the game. I want to see it grow. And we'll talk about more of that later. I see that a lot. But <laughs> we're building up to those stuff. But talking to her, talking to them and all that, and then giving them all that information, it was great. It was great to see them that they were actually enjoying it. I think they even ended up following Medizu's Instagram. But it was cool. And it was great. It was just a great experience. And then we drove home, and it was like a random, huge, random fog came out of nowhere. From the mountain, it was like coming down, <laughs> and then ended up <laughs> engulfing everything, and I could barely even see. Like we were struggling driving through those freaking twists and turns in that mountain. It was wild. So it was fun though. It was extremely fun, and we ended. I ended up having a blast, and my friend had a great time. He recorded. He talked to people in the community. Uh, he played the uh, the the first test of Crypto Clash. We played against each other. It was fun. It was just an overall fun experience. And we, we pulled a lot of stuff. Then, I guess now, Castle Cup. We talked about that. Didn't happen. And seeing how the tournament, uh, how the event was, I 100% understand why. They were, like, they were so stre- st- stretched out in their, their staffing they had, of course, they had the car, card IO people downstairs in the game lounge doing Crypto Clash, which I will say that they had a phenomenal showing. They had so many people um, coming into the booth asking and talking about the interest of the game. They were like, what's going on here? What's happening? And they, uh, I, I, I appreciate them li- allowing me to teach people how to play because I was teaching a good amount of couples how to play the game and then teaching them how to play the decks and then teaching them the lore and everything about the games about the cryptids and everything and then it was such a positive experience in the card io so again like i say huge shout out to that team uh chris across the pond and everything that they did a phenomenal job at the booth and i still have the shirt it's actually in my pjs um so like they did a blast they did an amazing job running the booth and being so welcoming, I ended up being across the pond like three times, so suck it. You can get your rematch, and you did get your rematch at uh, Houston Collecticon, and I still whooped that ass, so get it, boy. Um, so it was it was fun, but and then the booth, the medicine booth, man, I was seeing Andy run 
everywhere. And same thing with, uh, like, again, shout out to, like I said, shout out to Andy, shout out to Bailey, shout out to the artists, everybody there. They did a phenomenal job that weekend, making sure they were talking to, cus- like, the new people when they were giving out the promos, uh, making sure they didn't get shut down. <laughs> it was just so much happening so fast. But so, like, every, like, I didn't see any, like, negativity. I mean, there was, like, a couple people that would snark because they would cut the line. And I, and I, I will say myself, too. I even got cut from the line when uh, it was me and my boy, uh, Medizu Chef. Uh, they ended up kind of messing up the lines a bit. And they ended up letting the wrong line in, which my line ended up getting cut. And it sucks. But it is what it is. I didn't bitch. I didn't moan. I didn't cry. It sucked. I cried a little bit. I had a I had another opportunity to get another box and I did and I got my uh, Karomi box. I ended up getting two. I gave one to my coworker, who loves Karomi, and I gave it to her as a gift for her birthday. And then I got myself one, which I ended up pulling the Mothman plush, which where I got this girl. I, look at her, she's so adorable. And she got the little Mothman one. This is the one I wanted the most because you know your boy loves Mothman and he got him. He got him. So I'm really hyped. So, but I had a blast. I had fun with my friend Zombie, my best friend. She had fun. I ended up meeting again so many other content creators. We ended up taking on um, the last day. We ended up getting dinner with Texas Ted and some other people in the community, and just talking to them, seeing how they were, how they enjoyed themselves. It was just such an experience. And again, I couldn't like after witnessing that weekend. Don't like it was not possible for them to do Caster Cup. It is the biggest tournament of the year. It's supposed to be the biggest tournament of the year, and for them to put their full focus on the Metazoo booth, of course, since Kurumi scripted Carnival, they weren't gonna do. They weren't gonna be able to do both the Kip the Carnival and the Metazoo and the Caster Cup, given both of them the um, the full attention they deserved. So it wasn't gonna happen. And I'm glad. I'm glad again they weren't able to do that. Because again, like I said, not everybody's fortunate enough to go to these events. And that's why I'm saying Dallas is the best location because it's smack dab in the middle. It's affordable. Flights are affordable for everybody because they have either the Loveland, the uh, Love Field Airport, or the International Airport. And from what I've heard, people talking about how coming to Dallas, they had a smooth ride. They just complained about the heat, but that's Texas for you. But it's it's a, at least affordable or drivable for a lot of people. But instead, or New York, where you got to pay that New York tax. Luckily, again, I stayed with my best friend. So and plus, I have family up there, so I had no issues uh, flying there and staying there for for two weeks and doing all that stuff. I was fortunate enough to do those things. But when hearing other people talking about being excited that it was canceled because they wanted to go to Caster Cups because they were able to either make it to dark dark earth or flame or water they weren't going to be able to make it in new york or especially new york a second time because of how expensive it was that's just that's the unfortunate part about it but i'm glad that they weren't able to do it because of those things so caster cup didn't happen i know they even said that they're going to happen it's going to happen this year but there's no way it's going to happen this year especially since again we're already at the end of next year of this year so, which is fine, because it's like, it could still be considered 2023. I mean, there's so many things that happened the year afterwards or the year before, and they announced it that the year, that year. Maybe Caster Cup will happen, maybe it won't. But I want to reflect and everything. But yeah, that was my personal opinion with the roadmaps and how everything is and h- how this year was. And again, uh, so many shaking things, those, those things happened that sucked, but there's, there's ways to fix that. And I was talking to uh, some other content creators, like, look, this is my personal opinion. I wish that they didn't do the roadmap, especially going next year. If anything, a roadmap just for the cons confirmed a hundred percent cons because, or at least tournaments as well. Yeah. Tournaments as well. Because, like, I don't, like, the product line, it's cool, but, again, we don't have to speculate when it's it already happened. Like, it, it didn't work. 
So for them to just say, hey, okay, cool, this is the roadmap for products, and they announce so many things, and none of that happens, it's already there. We already have proof because it happened this year. So when people are saying, like, oh, no, this is going to be different, like, how, where, where? If it, if you're going to hear it, <laughs> the roosters are going off. <laughs> if anything, maybe a roadmap for the, for the official, n- like, 100% core set for, uh, for war, for, for seven seas, and for, um, for, what's that other set called? Legacy, there we go. For Legacy. Maybe for Legacy. And having all those three sets, or yeah, three sets as the main thing for MetaZoo. Cool, that's it. They can literally space those out, Legacy, War, and then Seven Seas. But those are at least confirmed. There's no pushing back. There's no nothing. Those are confirmed to be there. Everything else doesn't have to be in the roadmap. Like, for example, the... um, the comic, the comic was a build up, and it was a surprise, and the way it worked worked out and flushed out really well. There's no negative things on the comics that came out. It was really well done, and the comic and their new artists that they got, they worked really fast for everything that happened with that set with the with the man with the manga. It came out beautifully, no complaints on that. And the content people have been making out like Semantic, uh, Rusty Ranger, and all them. They did really well. They they were able to make really well content. If anything, I would love for them to do like how they've been doing the spoilers, getting content creators, getting partners involved, and into into the following sets. Like let us like let us do the talking for you, because that's what we need. We need conversations. We need to have the conversations for everything. And and for them to build up that conversation was great because like the way Seance and Native the the way they built up the the, the the spoilers was great, it was fantastic. They gave they 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 let out like all right cool we're having these content creators which unfortunately your boy wasn't part of them but it's okay. Uh, they had all these content creators and all these partners like each day making their way to how they 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 made their way on. Th- that was the way they announced the cards, and they made it themselves. They they put their own <laughs> dab in it. Like, for example, if I would have done it, I would have definitely done a recap of the cryptid lore. Like I do my bite sized cryptid lore video, and I'd be like, boom, here it is. Spoiler, where this card originated, and then of course talk about a little bit about the card, and then that's it. But at least I put the effort and I put my own spin content spin to it. And the way that they set that up was great because that build up conversation between the community and everybody was able to hype up each other because it's like, yo, did you see Termentic's video? Did you see Epic's video about the new card? Like, yo, he gave out a great spoiler. Same thing with the with the partners. Then it gave us par- uh, content creators ability to use those partners posts and be like, hey, uh, TCG Island just made a post or Medikai just made a post about so-and-so card. You know, the card's sick. Make sure to follow them. Make sure to follow MetaZoo. We're like, they're, they're doing, they're rolling out content and spoilers and everything. That was awesome. I did get picked earlier uh, when they were giving out spoiler packs. And of course, I did my spins to it. Those were, that's what I'm talking about is that we as a community are able to do that and build the conversation for MetaZoo because it's just something we're all passionate about. And it worked so well to build the buzz. And then when the set comes out, it was great. I mean, Shit happens, like the whole um, uh, reverse heavy booster boxes or heavy booster boxes, but that's that's besides the point because that's more of a manufacturer error than anything. But that's something that they can learn and try to do well. They can do their due diligence and make sure that that doesn't happen again with the next set and everything. But as a as a community standpoint, we built the conversation for a lot of these sets when they came out and it was so fun and phenomenal being able to have that power to spoil and give so much knowledge to the community and it was fun um i know some people were kind of mad for the um the uh art 
art blisters, the uh, fan fan art stuff, which we are going to talk about the whole fan, the uh, artist leaving. Uh, I know a lot of people were talking about the fan arts and what happened? MetaZoo owned up to it and they apologized. And what happened? They gave us an extra pack in those, which was great because the first ones just had one pack and that was it. And now they established it where they're giving two packs and they they saw it they 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 adjusted their course and they they listened to the community they were doing stuff for that and i liked it another thing we see now we're talking about good things that happened medicine and i do love that they changed they added the point system in the uh play network which was crazy i don't think i posted the video that i was supposed to uh personally but i used my points and i ended up getting a uh, awesome cumberland shirt when he's doing his little sheesh there's a green green shirt, which I do like that they have big boy size shirts. So thank you, Metazoo. Um, and I ended up getting a couple of booster packs for uh, uh, Seance, which I wish it was for Native, but Native was extremely sold out everywhere. But them adding that made it more enjoyable for the competitive com community to, and even the casual communities just to continue getting points and everything to, to pretty much earn stuff now i am just now i am i was hyped for the medals to come back especially with the alternate art medals which was a amazing idea because seeing all those different artworks for medals that they were gonna slowly start teasing and then the whole um uh, tournament kits the judge packs that we're supposed to be getting fortunately we didn't get any of that stuff which i am bummed that that didn't ever happen but I felt like that was such a huge right step in the right direction because that would have ignited the competitive scene 100%. Being able to be like, oh, crap, I don't have the uh, Poncho Piazza Bird, but I do have the Chris Catman one uh, or a second place medal or uh, um, or the Jet Yates uh, medal. But I don't have this one. It's like having randomized medals was a a crazy idea and it was so good and so i wish i i do hope again metazoo i hope you're watching this video please for the love of god bring that back or bring make that happen because when i was talking to so many competitive people they loved the idea and i i wish they could keep it going uh, i love the whole ro road uh metazoo tour when they went all over the u.s leading to uh houston collecticon I literally drove, and you see, look, this is how dedicated your boy is. I drove, I got out straight out of work and drove uh, four, uh, four hours to Oklahoma on the first stop to meet with Ted and Matt and talk, record, and we were talking to the uh, other people that were playing, I think, One Piece and Magic, and they were playing against Matt, and we were talking to them talking about the sets and people were buying stuff and product. They were opening cards or I was explaining about all this stuff. And when me and Ted ended up making this awesome video and it was so cool. And then the, him driving all the way through, through uh Southern U S going to San Diego comic con or uh, not San Diego comic con. Um, I think to, oh, to long beach collector con and then making their way to Houston collector con. It was awesome. It was so cool. And then they even stopped by uh, Dallas. I don't even think they made it. No, I don't think the road tour went to. I don't know. But they went to Dallas, and they ended up going to the car shop I know I used to go to a lot. And it was fun. And I brought my friend back in there, seeing so many new faces also, and then playing with them. I went with my boy Bunny Hunter. Go follow him. Um, so all that was such a fun experience. So, like, all these little small niches. And this, this is stuff that they didn't announce until then and there. That's what I'm saying road the roadmap doesn't have to be fully jam-packed i feel like everybody would just be happy for the official stuff and then just get those little surprises here and there will be great and i feel like that would that would be perfect because like we still haven't even gotten the 30 year anniversary stuff which a lot of people pre-ordered a long time ago which the 30 anniversary stuff is crazy as a competitive player because the fact that it makes any fourth wall real is wild like that leaves a whole bunch of avenues for a lot of things uh which actually i think i won on twitter <laughs> thinking about it now i think i did win i think like a pine that or something but 
they uh, they also released the uh, supporter medals, which your boy was fortunate enough to get two. two. Uh, I ended up getting both of them signed by Andy. Uh, I got the silver one, which again, I'm blessed and I appreciate every single one of you guys uh, thinking of me and talking about your boy getting those medals because my job, I feel like as a content creator, is that I want to make sure, every, even if I'm playing competitive and everything, I want everything to be fun. Again, not everybody's going to agree with me. Not everybody's going to like the way I am. Tough titties, I don't care. But I, like, even in competitive gameplays, I have a blast from the majority, from people who play with me. It's fun. It's great. And I love how, I know how to play competitive. I know how to play casual. Because, like, it's a card game. At the end of the day, it's a card game. And I just want to have fun. Same thing with my content. It's just to have fun and do everything. So I'm fortunate enough to do like all that stuff because it's just it's just fun to me. So regardless, and this is this is what I know a lot of people were telling me not to do this video because of how I'm going to base everything on because I'm not tiptoeing against anything. This is straight up my opinions on everything and I'm not afraid to say it like the way I did it in a uh, tormentix podcast uh, because there has to be. Fair, this is the key word, fair, constructive criticism. We That's the point of all this is that we have to be constructive. We have to be, we have to be able to talk about what we, what we want from this company and what we see, but we also have to take the negative, but we also have to appreciate the good. And that's from what I'm, what I've been seeing from so many events and so many people is that or like so many videos is that nobody's talking about the good that's Medage has done this year and such so many great things that they did like so many things like I've already pointed out are so great and they're not getting the credit they deserve they're not getting the flowers that they deserve and everybody's so quick to just be like nope Medage's dead it's over nope stop stop enjoying it and I'm just like no <laughs> I'm going to play with my friend Bunny Hunter at 3 in the morning MetaZoo until we we retired. Like no matter what and even if even even at the end of the day even if MetaZoo cuz I know MetaZoo announced that they're going to start doing uh, new new content creator medals and new support uh influencer medals even if I don't get that I'm still going to make videos. I'm still going to talk about MetaZoo. I'm still going to talk about I'm still going to make my content. And even if they just decide to uh, ban me on this for, I don't care because I'm not a child. Like a lot of these people are that cry and moan that they got kicked out of a Discord, which is hilarious to me. I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm in it for the community. I'm in it for myself. I'm in it for because I'm just having fun. I'm just a guy with the deep voice and is an insomniac. And it's just having fun with any, all of this because it's just a great time. So everybody that's taking everything way too serious and it's just like, no, but like, again, I love the company. I love, I love everybody in it. I love the staff. I love Mike. I love Andy. I love the, uh, fellow, my fellow content creators. I love the people I've met along the way. I wouldn't have met my lovely, uh, uh, team. I would kind of consider them my team, my artists, the artists that I've worked with, uh, Emily, uh, Azu uh, Azuzo and my, my girl Fizzy, the homie, uh, I wouldn't have met so many people because of this game. And I just have a blast with it. And people have had so much good reactions. Like, we've had the Cryptid Carnival, the Demon Fergus Cryptid Carnival. And the playmat was amazing. I have it done. And I love it so much. Where it's everything. And it's fun. What the hell? Man? <laughs> but the way people anticipate everything is just like, it's just so negative. And I felt that's the main reason I felt like I had to do this because of just the way people were just like ready to put their pitchforks and just say, like, nope, everything Metas has done is bad. This year is terrible. Like nobody's, nobody's enjoying it, but it's just like, it's not true. And I guess we, like, we do have to talk about the other thing that pretty much straight up caused all of this talk about Metazoo's dead is the artists leaving Poncho, Chris, Isaac, and the others. We don't know what happened. We don't know what happened behind closed doors. 
I've talked to Chris a bunch of times. Same thing with Poncho. Like, I feel like we have a, I guess, like, a, you know, we, we, we homies. <laughs> like, I've, I've talked to them. Chris is my flight buddy from there, and I, I, I am sad that he's left Metazoo. But he's going to be okay. Same thing with Poncho. Same thing with Isaac and the other artists. Like, it's going to be okay because we don't know what happened. Maybe they signed an NDA. Maybe they <laughs> can't do shit. Uh, maybe they burnt the bridges with Metazoo. Or maybe they didn't. Maybe it could have just been something really small where it's just like, hey, we're going at this creative, uh, creative artwork. Or they're not. Could have been a, a money issue. Or it could have just been creative differences. We don't know. And everybody just like straight up blaming and firing and, and like sh- throwing shots at everywhere. It's just like, relax. <laughs> Everything's going to be fine. Like, don't start selling your, your stuff and being mad. Because that, that's what caused FOMO is when everybody's like out here selling their collections at dirt cheap and then for all we know, 2024, and I'm hoping, and we're, we're about to get to the letter. Uh, 2024 ends up being the um, the year of MetaZoo, the rise of MetaZoo, and then people are mad that they sold their collections for dirt cheap, and they sold all their Kickstarters, their sample cards, and they're going to be mad. So it's like, but we don't know. But again, like I love, I love my fellow artists, friends. I wish them the best. I'm going to support as much as I can again. I share pretty much everything they post on Instagram. So they're going to be great. They're going to be fine. And whatever future endeavors they go for, I will follow them. I'm a su- I, I su- homie support homie. And if you don't support your homies, then you ain't a homie. That's weird to say, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so, okay. Now, I think I've covered a good amount of everything. I know this is a long-ass video. And it is going to be a long ass video, and I'm sorry for that. I mean, it might be a little condensed uh, here and there, because of course you're going to see some jumps, because your boy, this deep voice, uh, gets a little raspy sometimes, so I got to drink some water every now and then. But it's time to talk about those uh, letters to the Metazoo community. So in 2023 has been quite a year. We've done, we are doing. And well, can you uh, continue to do everything? And I do apologize if I stutter and mess up some words. I am dyslexic. Your boy struggles with reading. And I play a card game. I keep forgetting to play. Who knew? Uh, I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. That's why. Uh, <laughs> do everything in our power to make sure MetaZoo becomes a household brand for generations to come. As we finish out December, we will continue uh, December. And before we reveal the roadmap of 2024, please don't. Please, for the love of God, don't. Uh, <laughs> The for the 2024 next week, uh, I would like to address a few things. Pre-orders. First, you want to read this instead? <laughs> Who's just going off? First, there was a quite a few items that were on pre-orders that have been pending for quite some time. This is a failure on our part. Okay, there you go. So they're taking initiative. Uh, we are working on, on to... Re- uh, rectify it we will be updating our shipping hub which with details weekly with these pre-order items starting next week okay there we go additionally we will not be taking any more pre-orders on any items moving forward until the faith of metazoo's ability to deliver these products in a timely manner is restored in the community you'll love to see it this is also meant it means that starting now we will only be putting out of items for sale that are only available on the same day as shipping. Okay. Good job. God damn, my hand is huge. Uh, in other, in order to facilitate uh, and prioritize these pre-order items, they have our full focus. That is to say, we will not be releasing any new product until the pre-orders are fulfilled. There we go. You see that? That right there, I love it. Already. Stepping up to the great, dis- uh, great Lakes. We're stepping in the right direction. Of course, words talk, but actions speak louder. So we'll see. But I, I do like that they did address this. And it shows that they are taking in, uh, fault. They're taking initiatives to everything. And it is great to hear that. So thank you, Mike and the team. Collaborations. 
It's no secret that MetaZoo is founded on, fo found of collaborations. Yep, that is true. The roadmap says it all. And plus again, with Hello Kitty. And we are proud of the work we've done with our partners in the past in bringing new and unique products, service, slash services to MetaZoo fan base. That being said, uh, it's also no secret that these collaborations have created a bottleneck in our uh, support chain. The ability to deliver products on time, this is a because of the bulk of our collaborations we have historically taken on the role of products and a large portion of these products ourselves. See, this is something I mentioned in the beginning, how they've taken way too much and again, a lot of stuff isn't their fault where sometimes they're the collaborators end of the deal don't fulfill their portion and of course medicine takes the full heat because they're the ones that initiated everything so of course they're taking the initiative they're doing it they see it and they're gonna well, we're seeing there where there's gonna be some change with that in mind medicine is changing the approach and how we seek out and felicit uh, felicitate collaboration instead of products at the end of pr uh, instead of producing the product the end product of these collaborations ourselves, MetaZoo will instead only be seeking to license our IP to third parties who take on the role of products themselves. Therefore, seeing, uh, freeing our partners and focusing primarily on the core sets, additionally, we will no longer be reprinting core set items with different set symbols and licensing products. This way, core products can retain much value to our fans and players. Thank God. Yes, this is awesome. You see, and again, this is this is stuff that I've been. This is stuff that I was saying in the beginning. This is why I'm glad that we decided to read this together at the end because this is my first time reading this, and this proves a lot. We literally, I literally just said that you don't have to buy everything because literally a lot of stuff is reprinted, and I don't like the fact that a lot of it is reprints because like it loses the value, it loses it loses its touch. There's no point in going to those old sets, and we don't have to we don't have to buy them anymore we don't have to worry about them because it's like cool okay if i want utena i don't need native anymore because they're going to be in the freaking uh native re uh, revive set i don't need native and that loses its value for that subset that core set because now i'm focusing on the main uh, subset which i don't need to but now this proves to me it's like cool and on top of that they're giving their they're licensing their their brand to someone else so now they can worry about all right cool they're making the product they're doing it on time and they're bring, bringing it out and then is focusing on the core sets and that's what we definitely needed to do core sets all right core sets are the lifeblood of metazoo because lgs's are the lifeblood of any ttg which it is for this reason, with the expansions of mini sets such as Legacy and SCP that are already on pre-order, we will be shifting our focus on core sets eternally, entirely. For 2024, there won't be the typical flood of promo sets, mini sets, special sets, etc. that bottleneck our supply chain and take focus on value away from the core sets. Thank you so much. By focusing primarily on the core sets, MetaZoo hopes that LGS uh, hopes to support the LGS as an in-person player theme and it can only be generated by generated at physical stores. This effect will be a key to create a foundation player base that will make things like towers and caster cups more make more sense. Yep, that's what we needed. Because you see, that's the issue is that we were seeing the same people either top the tournaments or doing everything, which is okay. It's fine. Hey. Again, you work hard, you deserve everything you get. There is no shame in that. And the unfortunate thing is that you will always see the same people because there's no there's no word being around. There's no movement, If especially if you've seen the same people, the same thing and everything. And I do want to talk about this also before we get back into it. And of course, everything would be posted right here on these uh, articles. Um, I know that there was a lot of buzz about people releasing their their decks i am strongly against that as a competitive player because i like as a person like cool if you like it should be given the right to the player at the end of the day the player should have the right to either drop their set li their, their deck list or not because cool if i worked hard on my deck and i win 
and I don't want to share it, that is my prerogative. That is my choice. I don't have to share it if I don't want to, unless I go to a tournament where they say, hey, you have to share the deck list, and then cool. And then I, I gave consent, and that happens. But if not, that is not anybody else's issues if I'm not releasing it. As long as the judge looked at my deck and they said, no, no, everything is legal, they did everything right, then cool. That's it. That's all you need to know. But the fact that people were like kind of getting mad is just like, oh, well, why isn't he releasing his deck list? Or why is it like that should not be your concern? Because at the end of the day, it's not the deck, it's the player. And it, I've seen it so many times in so many card games where people are like, buy the, the person that won regionals or a local tournament and they suck. And they're mad that they didn't win a tournament. And it's like, well, I have his deck. And it's like, well, yeah, you have his deck, but you're not him. You're not him. You're not the player. You're not. You're not that player. That there's so many mentality, uh, men, different mental, uh, strategic uh, turns that happen where you're not thinking of that. So yeah, of course the deck's not working for you because you're not that person. I've the way I run my decks is complete different. I run in my cat's deck anti potion, which nobody did when we started seeing tournaments, and it blew everybody's mind that I was main decking anti-potion in my quest deck and it caused so much fear <laughs> in either my locals or in, in other tournaments where people were asking me why it's just like because the way I thought of it is that quets didn't need lightning in the bottle quets didn't need other things but quets did need something to protect itself toxic water to remove the first strike and lightning in the bottle for those heavy hitters that can survive quets Guess what you can do? Yeah, you can frogman and lightning the bottle, but not if I use anti potion and then you're you're fucked in the water. <laughs> Quetz comes in or my hornets come in and kill it and then you got nothing. Alright, cool. Yeah, you uh first an uh first anniversary, then you lightning in a bottle and on your uh your um your uh chessy to kill my quets. Well no. Anti potion. Not happening. That's the way I thought of it. Same thing with my light deck. I run lightning in a bottle and freaking uh, and and um, toxic water and and absorber in the main deck. People don't think that way, but there's other ways that people use their decks. They don't think of, but it's crazy because of that. And that's what I think is just like cool. That's my tech. I don't like doing it, and I'm I'm telling people here now. But it's just like cool. But sometimes people don't want to share their decks because, again, I don't want to go against 50 decks that are literally the same way I play. So if I win a locals or a big tournament and then the next tournament I go to, I'm playing my same deck. I'm just like, oh, great. I mean, I know how to play against it, my own deck, but it's just like, do I have to do it every single round? It's, it's just annoying. So the fact that people were mad that Medizu doesn't want to force people to release their decks I'm 100% with that, and I, I don't want, or I think they didn't. I don't know. Regardless, I don't I don't like that people are trying to force other people to share their decks. All right. Anyways, um, core sets will be delivered to our distributors a full two or three weeks ahead of schedules to release date. There we go. We love to see it. Every delivery will contain tournament kits oh, for pre-sale events and release events uh, and resale events that support provided uh, incentives for players and our MZOs, which I love. MZOs deserve so much. The fact that they're sacrificing their time, because look, I used to be a judge for Pokemon, and the fact that they were giving like us like the staff cards and everything, we love it. Because like again, money is still involved in everything, and don't forget that. So when an MZO is sacrificing his chance to play for a medal that's potentially worth a thousand dollars or five hundred dollars that hurts because it, uh, judges want to play the game i know a lot of judges that go to different tournaments that they're not sanctioned because they want to play the game we love the game we we want to play but we can't because someone has to organize it so they're taking one for the team they're taking one for the team and shoot shout outs to every single mzo like my boy kurt that sacrifices his time to go to these events, to play local, to keep the places going because they want people to show up. So huge shout out to every MZO that fucking takes the time, that sacrifices their weekends, their weekdays to go. And sometimes they even do it for free. So the fact that Meditu is going to finally, hopefully, find it. Again, actions speak louder than words. Hopefully they 
to do what they're promised. Like, again, the uh, tournament kits where we're supposed to get the random medals, different alternate arts for the first place medals, and the MZO packs were the stat packs because, again, those are where the money is at for the MZOs because those staff cards are expensive. And, you know, plus also that's it's it's a statement. Playing against somebody and then you see them whip out a lightning in a bottle that has staff on it or MZO on it. That's crazy. That's awesome. And especially if they do tiers like other card games like Dragon Ball Super, One Piece, where they do Judge, Judge 1 or Judge 2. They can do that. But like instead of, instead of being the like corny name like that, we have MZO or Apprentice, Master and all that stuff. How cool would that be to see that stamped on the card? So good, good, good job. These tournament kits will include prize cards, special packs, and MZO promos, all of which is very typical of a tournament kit for other TCGs. Hell yeah. We will also be making different versions of tournament kits available at any store that creates events on the MPN to provide continuing streamings, uh, streams of LGS support and prizes. That is, uh, uh, before I go there, all core items, including the tournament kits, will also will have code cards to provide the free booster packs on the upcoming client, Cryptic Clash. We view the growth of our physical player base and our online player base on two sides of the same coin. Thank you. Thank you so much. Again, the, the thing that, we were, that was halting M uh, LGS is because of the support. Not a lot of people didn't see it because, I mean, MetaZoo has that, unfortunately, MetaZoo has that stigma of the whole MTS. Uh, NFT scandals and all that stuff before, not part of Medizu, but the old scandals. But unfortunately, Medizu got tied with that. And it, we have a long road to work. Everybody, if you love Medizu, you're part of this community. You have, we want to build this community up. We have a long ways to go. And the fact that Medizu is finally listening to us and is uh, willing to reach out and finally help us help them is great. Because we, as a community, have to do better and help support as much as we can. So now it's time to go to these events now. Because, like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be 100% honest. I haven't gone to a local so in a long time because there's no incentives for me. I'm going to be completely honest because I also have to take criticism, too. I, and I'm going to take, take it. I haven't been to my own locals and supported as much as I should be. Because there's no there's no point there's no incentives for me to go again there's no packs there's no promos there's nothing there's nothing for me to to work for but this this is what I love again if MetaZoo and if MetaZoo did the whole thing before like how they announced it beforehand where the tournament kits the LGS kits the alternate art medals and everything and the MZO support was happening literally when they said it was a couple months back we would have been fine. Everybody would have been hunky dory. Everybody would have showed up to LGS, and we would have probably seen a huge increase. Now, I'm not saying that the competitive scene is dead everywhere. We've seen a bunch of activity over there in, uh, like, the South Bay Casters. They always having like 20 people show up. The game's still fun, and I'm glad that they're gonna look at it at a different approach and then support the competitive aspect. And again, too, now I do love that. I love the Cryptic Clash game, and I love that they're gonna give support for that, and then have those tournament packs. Because, again, unfortunately, not everybody, because of the stigma and because of what we have to work for, not everybody has tournaments. Not everybody has friends to play with. But this is going to be a step in the right direction. Now everybody can play either online or with their friends in person, but they're going to get stuff. They're going to get incentives. We're going to get momentum. And that's all we can ask for. Momentum is what we need. And we're finally getting the fuel to get going. So there we go. Competitive play. We originally wanted to do Nine Towers and the Caster Cup of 2023. But that felt fell quite short. And that due to logistics reasons. What, which, of course, it's exactly what I said. I view this as a major fail on our part. And we need to do better. I'm glad you said that. With our new focus on the core sets and supporting gameplay in the LGS level, we hope to create a payer base of new casters and both easy qualify for par uh, participate in future towers and caster cup. Now, I'm going to say this right now. If we do not have caster cup or towers in 2024, that's okay. If, if, if what MetaZoo is saying right now, if what they're saying right now and they're going to do exactly, I'm going to say this every single time, 
Actions speak louder than words. So if they do exactly what they're doing right here, and we build up, we get new people. And again, this again, this falls on us as a community to invite people, to get people in, to to get these incentives. And we actually starting to see these incentives. We're gonna be popping. We're gonna be eating good. We're we're gonna be getting there. And if we get this, and we get that, we build up the LGS. We start seeing more casters. We start seeing more people. We start seeing a bigger growth in the community. We're we're gonna be fine. We're gonna be fine. And in 2025, we see a a tower or two. Maybe I I wouldn't even be mad if they do three towers. I feel like three towers rotation was perfect because at least we know. Three or four towers, or yeah, four towers. Four towers, one a quarter, and then Caster Cup, or even Caster Cup can be the fourth tower, whatever. Um, we can build on that, and then at least, cool, we know what towers is coming out, we know how to prepare better, and we know what we're doing. And then we don't have to worry about venues or surprise attacks and everything. So four or five towers, four towers, or three towers in a Caster Cup, 2025, especially with this roadmap, perfect. However, due to competitive play, oh damn, I should probably <laughs> I should have probably waited. <laughs> However, due to this is gonna be weird because like the picture is gonna be right here, and I'm like looking this way. Sorry about that. Uh, actually, I can do that better. Give me a second. There we go. Um, <laughs> however, uh, do uh, however do how. However, because competitive play hasn't been properly for, uh, for, uh, frosted, frosted, yeah, that's the word, uh, at LGS level, we believe that Towers is very much putting a cart before the horse kind of situation. Oh, okay. For the reason, 2024 will shift our focus on releasing each core event and running more events with smaller cash. There we go. Okay, okay. Prod and product pricing until towers and caster cups can ju be justified for the player growth standpoint. All pending tower payments will be our successful. All, p uh, all pending tower payments to our successful casters will be going out at the before the end of 2023. That is awesome. I am excited, and that's going to be great. Because now you see, this is what I'm fine. And this is what I just said. This I should I just I should have finished this. <laughs> um, this is great because now we're gonna see a focus on on a lot of like on the LGS. We we gotta build ourselves up. We they like I said they got too ambitious. That's okay, but we're building ourselves up, building ourselves on the grab up, making sure our competitive scene in the locals is better better. And we get a bigger standpoint where it's like, cool, it is justifiable to have these huge pools. Now, if they decide to keep these huge pools of $20,000, $50,000 cash pools and divide it equally, but at least we're seeing a huge number in, in people now, that is what we want. That is what we want to see where everybody's here, everybody's having fun, and it's going to be safe. And then plus, again, please bring uh, side events. Side events definitely is is a great and is definitely needed and is much appreciated so please but this i love i love i, lo I love this i love this i love this a lot um events metazoo is historic has historically ran some pretty awesome event amazing events and conventions it is true they are fun in the past several comic cons we've attended metazoo has analyzed had uh, metazoo has always my bad Again, this thing, my boy, your boys is like. <laughs> Medicine has always had a large lines and support from the community. I'm telling you, like the fact that people are saying Medizu is dead and all that stuff, even if people are just getting the promos just to flip them, that says a lot. And the fact that it's so much, we had so many lines, like it was so cool. But the fact that they did a couple hiccups, but small hiccups, they did a phenomenal job of running everything. Uh, that being said, while we view the importance of these events from a marketing standpoint in 2024, we prefer to focus our attention on both events and support players and building the bridge to the Terrific community. For this reason, our primary 
event driven focus for 2024 will be attending Collecticon, which they're going back to the roots because they kind of, I, I remember they wanted to kind of side, uh, swip away, slide away from Collecticon and move to like bigger, bigger events like Comic Con, uh, New York Comic Con, and all that stuff. But they're going back to their roots, which is great because that's where, you know, the fun is. As well as various cryptid related events, festivals, and conventions around the U.S. I'm excited because, again, this is what makes Meta. That fucking sucks. Uh, th- again, this is what makes MetaZoo fun. Like being able to go to these events and having fun and seeing all these things is what makes it exciting. Like I've never dreamt. I've never thought of going to Mothman Festival. I've never got thought about going to Whole Dang Festival or the Loveland Festival or even um, Salem and and Roswell, New Mexico. Those things I never thought of. But as a, someone who loves cryptids, even before MetaZoo, and thought of like loving this stuff because how in tune it is with my life, it is so crazy. And going to experience these places was such a fun experience. And then meeting so many different casters, meeting people in and out of the community, and then even talking to people in the cryptic community. It was so cool and so awesome. Like, I would, like, 2024, I would love to be in a in a, in a a podcast in one of these cryptic community uh, people, because it will be fun. It will be fun to talk about my experiences and stuff like that, like how I experienced my with Lechuza and all that stuff. Like, seeing all these things and then talking to all these people is what makes MetaZoo so different from the rest the fact that it's not even in game where the outside and world matters it's also with these cons and these conventions is if is, is the importance of the outside world and how it entwines with metazoo and for those of you i need you to understand i need y'all to focus on this is that i need y'all to take a step back and actually enjoy your surroundings so many times I'm at these events and I, I talk to people I'm like, oh, I'm just here for the line. I'm here for the promo and all that stuff. Like, that's it. Like, you're telling me you've been to uh, Loveland, Ohio. You've gone to the Loveland Tower. You've gone to all these places. You've been to the Mothman t- uh, statue. You've gone and explored. Like, I get it. Not everything is going to be, like, flashy and, and cool and everything. But, like, you're telling me you've done this, all these things already? No. That take a step back, enjoy your surroundings, enjoy the people around you, take in this memory, and appreciate what you, that's in front of you. And I don't think a lot of people are doing that, especially with MetaZoo. And it's fun. I've done it, and I'm having a blast. I always, every time I go to one of these high stake tournaments, I always make sure to look around and at least have one day where I was like, cool, if I scrub out. I'm going to go enjoy myself. I'm going to go look in the town, make my content, have fun with my friends. And if I make it day two, then at the end of the day, I'm going to go look around and have fun. So I'm glad that they're doing that. And that was the beauty of having MetaZoo focus on these, like, small tournaments. And I'm glad that the Dark Tower was at the Mothman Festival and that they postponed it and moved it. All right, the partner program. Partner program has a huge success in several ways, with many partners being uh, champions of the MetaZoo brand and community. However, with our focus on the core TCG presence at LGS, our partner program won't be expanding during 2024. Several selected partners will remain in the program, and we hope to continue to build their communities and support with our fans and mailing lists. This is something I won't speak about because, again, I'm not a partner. Um, especially how they're talking about it. I mean, the way I can see it is like, cool, so focus on your LGSs, but I have friends that are partners, so again, I'm not going to speak on this because I don't have a foot in that game. So that's something I'm not going to focus on. <laughs> so I do apologize if people were thinking I was, but I'm not. There's nothing I can say because I don't, I'm not in the game. I'm not in the partner game. I don't know. I'm not going to speak on that behalf. Let's move on from that one. Discord. When MetaZoo was, found, was first founded, uh, first started, it was a gr- uh, grassroots effort by several dozen individuals. Three, two, one. Many of whom helped build MetaZoo into the company it was because it has become. 
In the past three years of growth, the MetaZoo Discord has been primary center of communications with MetaZoo's new and ways with news and ways to connect with the MetaZoo staff. However, and this has resulted in gatekeeping the information that we believe many do more harm than good coming <laughs> the coming uh intent hear your voice struggling. Uh, coming year. For that reason, on January 1st, 2024, the official MetaZoo Discord will be changing to be uh, will be changing to be more of an information and announcing hub than a location for fans to discuss. There, there are way more better Discord groups. There are many other Discord groups run by fans and partners that are fantastic avenues to continue the MetaZoo discussion here. We encourage you to make your own that fits the niche of your Discord uh, desire, MetaZoo experience. The MetaZoo community and its staff will continue to communicate with the MetaZoo community through official social media posts, channels, and websites, as well as Discords when and where is appropriate. This is great. This is fantastic. This is, again, something I talked about. Them, we have such a direct access to MetaZoo that we don't need that it caused a lot of harm, unfortunately, than good because of so many, like it being real time and shit happens. So the fact that they're, they're, they're doing this, it's like there's so many other discords that we can talk to, we can we can discuss. I mean, I even have my own discord. Not really focused on MetaZoo, but it's my own discord, so you can go ahead and follow me. Uh, you know, you can join in there, talk about it. We talk about being live, collecting, any card games. We're just We're just a bunch of homies. But there's other great discords, and that's a reason why so many discords started popping up now because of this. And I do appreciate, and I'm glad that they're going to do this because we don't need full access to them. There's so many stuff that are happening, so many different things that are going around. We don't need that. So I'm glad that they're doing that. The IP. MetaZoo is a very exciting. MetaZoo is very excited to continue with the development of its IP. Primarily in the form of the manga, which will, uh, which we are confident, which will lead. Primarily in the form of the manga, which we are confident will lead to an animated show, or show or shorts in 2024, 2025. Not to put in lightly, its form of the IP will continue to drive force behind MetaZoo's ability to um, resonate, resonate throughout multiple generations so okay we're gonna start talking about the show and everything again boy don't you call it um so i'm glad that they're doing stuff like that and they're moving their way to that direction so that's pretty cool that they're 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 finding out what they want to do final note all right the final the final the thing to end this all when i first started in medicine in 2020 i had a very little idea how large i wanted to grow I can't tell you how excited this journey has been because of what is meant in my life. With MetaZoo, I have found purpose, and with this community, I have found friends and developed a family. MetaZoo is synonymous with the race phase soon, but in the continuing months, the years will be synonymous with the phase now. I and the rest of the MetaZoo staff want to take a, take this end of the year letter and thank you all for the beginning of this journey with us. This is just the beginning. Mike Waddell, CEO and founder of Medicine Gaming. Now, this is great. They're taking accountability. They've heard the community. They were watching the, uh, the town hall meetings that other great content creators and partners were doing. They're listening to the voice and they're, 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 they're doing something, and they're taking accountability, and that's literally all we can ask. You see, look, at the end of the day, they're still, they're not as big as Pokemon. They're not backed by everybody, like big household company names. They're literally, it was just literally Mike, how he said, just a guy that had a vision and wanted to do something with it, and we're all here. And because of that vision, 
so many of us have built our own communities, have made so many, met so many amazing people, and we were able to stand out because of that. For me personally, I started making content with because of MetaZoo. I wanted to follow MetaZoo from its fall, uh, from its not its fall, hopefully not, from its uh, right up, and you know what? Maybe it's fall, but I'll be there through the whole thick and thin because I have I have so much love for this game. When I first went to MetaZoo, I, like I said in my first video, my community video, I went to vi I literally went to MetaZoo's show. Uh, convention at uh, C2E2 and that's when I met Mike for the first time I literally got the game and started playing and then a month later I went to a con I flew in there one day and came back that same day and meeting Mike seeing how excited he was to meet me telling all his staff and everything like yo this guy flew in today and is leaving today just to beat us just to have fun with us to the point where I got this C2E2 booster box signed by him with his OG signature. And this will always be in my collection because this means so much to me because of that memory. Because of what, what it was and the vision I had where I was like, this is going to be something. This is going to go somewhere. And if it doesn't, oh well. I'm here for the ride. I'm having fun with everybody. I'm, like I said, I have, and it's being repetitive. It's being repetitive, but I've met so many great people, so many friends that I consider family myself, and they're scattered all through the United States, but it's because of this game that we've met, and because of that, I am forever grateful. I've built so many great bonds because of this game, some bonds that were failing, some bonds that got better. I got at more of my show. Like I started making con like I started making content. And we're at five hundred followers now on Instagram, which might not be a lot to a lot of people, but to me, I thank you. I thank you for listening to this insomniac guy that literally just talks and everybody hap likes it. And it's like everywhere I go, everybody imitates my voice, the DB Fergus. And it uh, it makes me happy seeing people jo have so much joy saying that name. And I'm not going to lie, I, I thank Metazoo for that. And even if I don't become an official content creator, if I don't become an influ uh, official influencer, I'm okay with that. Because I like it. I like this community. I'm here for fun. That's it. They don't owe me anything. Metazoo doesn't owe anybody anything. And that's okay. So, regardless of what they do with this video, and this is coming to a close, uh, we're two two and a half minutes in, so thank you for everybody who's watching this. And please, again, share this with all your friends on Instagram, because I feel like again, I've had so many people reach out to me as somebody that's a competitive player, a collector, a casual player, and somebody that's gone to every event, either the cons or the tournaments. I feel like I have a good general standpoint that I could talk for about everybody. So please, share this, share this on Instagram, share this to your discords, and watch it, because it's fair constructive criticism that I felt like we have to talk about, and I know everybody's mad, I know everybody doesn't want to give MetaZoo the, 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 the second chance, but they deserve it, and for me, this is like, 2023 was... Uh, Roswell, New Mexico, and then maybe 2024 is Salem, and they blow it out of the park. I would love to see them do just like what they did in Salem and edit what they did on uh, New Mexico, bring it back to Passports, because your boy's about to finish that. Bring it back. Um, have the scavenger hunt. Ha just make it, have fun. Have fun with it like I used to have it. I know it used to be, now it's more corporate and everything, but it used to be fun and make it, f and that's what it, everybody loved and enjoyed about it, and this love letter to the community feels like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna go back to that, and I'm gonna give them a chance, I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right here making content, and it is 20, uh, 
2024, uh, 2023. We still got to make that community video. And your boy's going to be right there making it. So I will be reaching out to a lot of content creators and MGO and maybe some staff members too. And if they want to uh, be a part of it. But I just want to say thank you. And thank you, Mike and Andy and the Metazoo staff for listening to your lovely audience. Because we love the game as much as you guys. We love your art. We love your presence. We love the game, more importantly. And we love everybody in the community. Because we love this community and we want to see it grow. And for those of you who are hating on MetaZoo, who just got out of MetaZoo, take a chance. Take a chance. Step back. And give it another try. Put some effort. Try to be part of the community. Don't think about the negative. Do something productive. And if it doesn't work out, then I'm sorry. I hope whatever other card game you go into is better and you have the most fun you have like we have. And for those of you who felt like, why you should give it a second chance, then I don't know what to tell you. Just go for it. It's out in the dark, you know. But I think that wraps up everything. I think I said everything I needed to. I hope everybody enjoyed it. And I hope everybody accepts the criticism. I hope MetaZoo, Mike, Andy, you see this. I hope he even makes it to the uh, the story. And I hope we, we learn from this conversation. And at the end of the day, look, I love every single one of you guys. You're all cool. It's fun. We're all just having fun. It's a crazy world. Some people use this as an escape, and hopefully everything goes well. So here's to 2024. Here's one last time. Hope sh hopefully we do see it again. This MetaZoo, this is a step in the right direction, and we appreciate you taking that step. But that's it, at least for me. As always, if you're a sinner, do a little bit of good out there. If you're a saint, don't be afraid to be a little bit naughty. But everybody spread peace, love, and positivity. I've been your host, the Demon Fergus. This has been a chat, or I guess a speech, or whatever you want to call it, on MetaZoo. Let's work together and make this the community we know it is. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace!